the curving plane. Surprisingly, it is a plane that cuts a curve. Let's take a closer look. The curving plane is a tool that really has a lot of interesting story to it. Historically, it would have been called a rabbit saw because you could make a rabbit with it. The saw can come in and you set up the differences so that you can cut down to one side. Then once down to depth on one side, you can rotate the board and then you can cut it at 90 degrees from the other side. And before you know it, you've got yourself a rabbit. Now you can't call it a rabbit plane because, well, um, that already exists. So it's a rabbit saw. It's basically a saw that can cut rabbits. It was honestly not a very well-known or widely used tool because well, once you get a little bit of skill down, you can do the exact same thing with a back saw. It probably would have remained there if it wasn't for a guy named Tom Fidgen also known as the Unplugged Workshop. He has a class up in Canada and does some really cool things. Well, he found and thought, you know what? What if I use this to just cut a kerf? Rather than cutting the other side and turning a rabbit, I just cut a kerf to guide the saw when I need to do some resawing. What if I want to take this board that's about an inch thick and I want to resaw it? I want to cut it this way and turn it into two boards that are around three eighths of an inch thick. I can put this up in my vise. I can grab a hand saw or my big frame saw and I can cut it. But if you're new to the sport or you don't quite have the skill yet, you might find that the, the blade is going all over the place. And that means that this one inch piece, you might be lucky to get two quarter inch pieces out of it because you're going to have to remove so much material with the blade going all over the place. And it's going to be a pain. And it's going to take a long time. I just wish there was a way to guide the saw to go straight down the cut. Wait a second. What if I made a kerf all the way around the board? So the idea is you take the kerfing saw and you run it all the way around the board and you cut in a quarter inch or a half inch groove all the way around. And that way, when you actually do your sawing, there's a groove on both sides that kind of capture the saw and guide it as it goes along. In theory, it's a really good idea. It holds the saw and it allows someone with a little less skill to track rather evenly. And for the most part, it works. It will help you out. It will help keep the saw on track. But it's not a foolproof thing. The saw can still jump that track and start cutting out somewhere else. But it does help. And if you are having problems with it, that can be a great way, kind of like training wheels. You get the skill down and then eventually you don't need it so much. Because the downside to it is it takes a long time to make that kerf all the way around the board. It could take me just as long to make the kerf as it does to make the cut. And if I've got the skill to just grab the saw and cut it, why would I want to spend the time doing that? So it's kind of one of those things that, yes, it can really help out and it can be very beneficial if you're the right person for it. Right now, if you want a kit, you can actually go get one from Bad Axe Tools or from Blackburn Toolworks. The one I made is from Blackburn Toolworks. Uh, it's a little bit different design and I kind of like it with the bigger gullets. The one from Bad Axe is a phenomenal saw as well, but you can also make it with a scrap piece of saw. I realized I was doing a lot at a little bit over a quarter inch and so I just made this one with a stock fence on here. It's all set up and ready to go and always cuts at a quarter inch. The only problem with this one is the teeth are relatively small on it and so they tend to clog up. You generally want big honking teeth so that the dust can fill into these pores, especially if you're doing long cuts. You don't want these clogging up on you. I've seen several people take a Stanley 45 and they'll loosen up the two skates, slide them apart and put a blade in between them and then lock that down in and actually use the Stanley 45 as a kerfing plane. Works great and I've had several people tell me it's a phenomenal way to do it. I've never tried it myself, but maybe one of these days I'll give that a shot. I generally do a lot of resawing in my shop. I'm usually resawing once a week or, or more than that. And when I first got started, I used this quite a bit. It was a great way to get a track that held me closer to where I wanted to be. Was it perfect? No. Sometimes my saw wasn't set up right. Sometimes my body wasn't set up right and I still jumped the track and man, was that annoying. But it did help me. It got me closer to where I wanted to be a little bit easier. And so if that's something that's interesting for you, a curving saw might be the way to do it. Now, in reality, I haven't used this to actually do resawing in six and a half, seven years, because at a certain point I was doing it enough that my, my skill got to that point where if I drew a line on the board, I could get the saw and just cut. And it's nice once you get that skill because 
you can save a lot of time because this does take a lot of time to do that. Now I have pulled this out to make rebates from time to time. Those rabbits, um, sometimes I want to saw them and this is a great way to do it. It does it very quickly and efficiently and works really well. So do I recommend you go and get a kerfing plane? Uh, and most people, no. If you're willing to spend the time and learn the skill, then just do it by hand. It's faster, it's more efficient, it's easier, it's more enjoyable. But if you don't have the skill yet, you have a little bit of money and you wanna make something fun, and this is a tool you may use from time to time, especially if you wanna do sawn rabbits. It is nice to have, so it might be worth getting. Everyone's a little bit different. I'd love to hear your thoughts on it. Is it something you've gotten? Is it something you like? Throw those down in the comments down below. Thank you. That really helps out the channel. Um, honestly, putting those comments down there is great. I do read through all of them and I answer as many of them as I can get to. So if you have specific questions, throw those down there. Thank you. Um, anytime you like, comment, share, subscribe. Thank you, thank you. Hit the thank you button. That means a lot. Speaking of thank you buttons, these people over here have hit the big thank you button. It's the, the Patreon link in the description. Between patrons and the member uh, button down below, thank you. You guys are the ones who make this channel happen. Without you, Wood by Right would not exist. We are completely sponsored by you. You allow us to do fun things. As a matter of fact, this is one of the first things I purchased with Patreon money once that it got up and going. So, thank you. Patrons, you make the world go around, and if you do ever meet one of these people in person, tell them thank you. I think that'll do it for now, and until next time, have a wonderful day. You do have to be careful with a kerfing plane. Don't, don't hold it up too close to the microphone, otherwise... Yeah.